Ahoy there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another Behind the Corner, where I take you behind the scenes of running Bowers Game Corner. I haven't done this segment in a hot minute, and so uh, I'm excited to get back into it. So if you're not familiar with this segment, this is where I really just kind of pull up my shirt and I just go, yeah, show you everything you might possibly want to know about running uh, my YouTube channel. Now, I used to do this on a monthly basis, and I'd break down exactly how much I made, and we'd study trends and analyze stuff and things like that. However, as many of you know, if you're, if you're a regular follower of this channel, if you're not, no biggie, I don't really care. It, it, it is what it is. got a busy life. For the last about four or five months, I've worked for a company called Hero Time Manufacturing, which is a manufacturer out of China uh, who makes board games. And it was a fantastic opportunity, and that is about to end this month, which sounds bad, but it's actually really, really good. Because what my boss is doing is he's going to set me up, he's going to get me some equipment, uh, he's going to help me work on something, and I'm essentially going to turn into not only running Bowers Game Corner, just as, you know, Bowers Game Corner, but also as a Kickstarter consulting agency. Because, as you know, I do a lot of stuff with Kickstarter. So really, what I want to do with this session is two things. First and foremost, I am going to break down quarter one 2024 so the last three months where i've pretty much had bowers game corner be kind of dormant i haven't released too many videos i haven't been covering many board games aside from the kickstarter critique which is something i really really love doing and it's the reason why i got my job at hero time manufacturing because i was a kickstarter not my words expert um so Let's go ahead. Right now we're on the channel analytics page, which used to be one of my favorite uh, places on all of the internet to browse because it just gives you an insane amount of information about your YouTube channel. And before we get into the last three months, let's just take a look at this is the last 28 days. And this YouTube channel has earned $266.63. You know, we're, we're cruising around 8, 9, 10, 12 something bucks uh, a day, which is fine. We've got 138 subscribers, and all but two days, we gain subscribers. Let's see, what did we lose? Uh, sports to die. When I actually did post a review, people were like, nah, we're here for plumbing content. And then uh, and that Kickstarter critique. But other than that, we're still gaining subscribers. Nine, a couple days ago, always nice. Watch times 3.8 thousand hours, and views 150,000 in the last 28 days. But we're not here to see that. Also, the real-time section, which is my favorite section of all, we'll check out a little bit later. Now, the other part of this video that I'm really hoping to do is get your feedback because, as I mentioned, I'm going to be pivoting to a Kickstarter consultation service, and I've actually got a huge list of different Kickstarter services that I'm going to be offering them. I'm going to read them out, talk about them a little bit, and honestly, that's at the very end of the video. That's if like you're, you're, you just want to help me out because... It's a lot to go through, and I just want to know if you have, A, any other ideas of different services that I could potentially offer, and B, uh, if anything, if everything sounds weird, if it sounds wonky, that sort of stuff. So here we go. Uh, since 2024 started, your videos have gotten half of a million views. That's spectacular. I've gained 600 subscribers. I love it. It says I'm down 65% less than October 7th through December 31st. That's a bit misleading, um, both in October... Yeah, I've had that job since September, so I've been working for Hero Time since then. But from October to December, you get a lot of the Christmas and the holiday boom, as you'll probably see. Actually, uh, oh no, that's we're not going to see it because we're just looking at the last uh, few months. So since the beginning of the year, this channel has made $940, so nearly $1,000 in quarter one, which is not great. Honestly, but then again, I have not been putting that much effort into it aside from the Kickstarter critiques. As you see, you can see the things that I released during the month. Uh, also, I do a lot of YouTube shorts just because I like making YouTube shorts and they gain me a good chunk of subscribers. But let's see if that's still the case when I leave the channel dormant. So... Not much to dig in here, so let's look down here. The top content in this period. So these are the videos that got the most views over that time period. And how to play War the Card Game, undoubtedly number one with a bullet. 15,000 more than everything else. Trading crypto on Coinbase, be like. That's a that's a, that's a a 17 second video where I talked about how I lost all my money on crypto. And apparently people really still feel that one. Uh, how to play Guess Who the Card Game. So I'm seeing right here that there's a definite, uh, a definite liking can I, can I not right-click on you? No, I can't right-click on you. Oh, man, that sucks. All right, so I got to just manually click on it. Uh, so, yeah, and here's why. So this video has only made me $7.59 out of the 116,000 views. And a lot of people might see that and they'd be like, oh, that sucks. Um, but 
for me, I see this number right here. That's 186 subscribers of people who like card games. And that's in, uh, you know, a little bit over a year, 444 days. I, I have no complaints about that in any way, shape, or form. Let's just check out since this beginning of this year. 67 subscribers. Interesting. Up and down and up and down and up and down. That's really fascinating to me. And then, boom. Uh, this looks like it's going to be an evergreen video, hopefully for a very long time as well, as long as YouTube Shorts continue to be a viable thing. And if TikTok gets banned, fingers crossed, let me tell you, I'm really rooting for TikTok to get banned. Not going to happen, because there's just going to be an American company who buys it, uh, probably owned by someone, who, whatever. I'm not going to get into the whole political aspect of it, but let's be quite frank, we're all adults, TikTok's probably not going to ban. Not to sh not uh, too shabby little subscriber pop. Oh no, absolutely not. And once again, this is one of the things that, that you might not realize about Bowers Game Hoarder. There's these YouTube shorts and these how to play videos. They power so much on the back end. You know, just in the last 90 days, I, I and I did nothing to this video. I've done nothing. I haven't shared it. I haven't posted about it. I haven't liked it. I, I Maybe I've commented on one or two comments that people post on it. But it's earned me 67 subscribers. Now, I know the 262, it's nothing to, it's nothing to scream about. But the 67 subscribers, yes, please. Because at the end of the day, that's the big thing that matters to me. The money, the money will come. The money will go. I'm not, me, luckily me and my wife are in a position where my wife makes enough money where we're not financially strapped. And we live in the second cheapest cost of living in all the United States of America, which definitely does help. Uh, so let's go back here. Uh, yeah, how to play Guess Who the card game. Same thing, 126 subscribers, only $2.74. But at the end of the day, that video took me like six minutes to make because it's a YouTube short. It's not like an actual long-form video. So this is something that I absolutely need to do over the next few months. This is just screaming to me. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be smart. I'm going to grab this pencil right here, and I'm going to write down exactly what I need to do over this channel because starting in four days, I'm going to be pivoting to full Bowers Game Corner. Well, not full Bowers Game Corner. I still am a stay-at-home dad. That's the other reason why Bowers Game Corner's uh, production has decreased massively is because I'm a stay-at-home dad to an almost two-year-old uh, my, my daughter was amazing, but then I also work 30 hours a week. And luckily, due to the nature of working at Hero Time and Bowers Game Corner, I can do, I can squeeze in 30 hours other times. You know, my wife normally goes to sleep around 10 o'clock, and I normally go to sleep around 12, 31 in the morning. So there's two, three hours every day there. We got nap time, that sort of stuff. But I need to write down on this list, the first thing I need to do is uh, how to play YouTube shorts. I need to quite literally go through all the games in my collection find games that are popular or mass market and do these because the thing about this is the way i try and see how popular i think a game is going to be is how many languages are in the rule booklet that to me is a really telling sign you go open a thing at uno there's gonna be like four to eight different languages and that's when you know that's potentially one you really want to make so how to play sky joe the card game uh apex legends on xbox is garbage right now i don't know how this continues oh i do because it's a 15 second video these short videos do really 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 well uh must know character trick on apex legends and, and then video game content as well so that's the other big thing too i typically tend to keep the video game content to the youtube short format and i need to get back to doing more of that but i feel like focusing more on the board game aspect is currently the way to go so let's dive in let's really get oh can I look up here? I'll be honest with you. I used to be way better at doing this sort of stuff, but I haven't done it in a while, really looking in the back end. So here we'll start looking at uh, content. So let's see. All new viewers. So shorts brought me in nearly a quarter of a million new viewers this year. Videos got me 132,000 and live streams at 13,000. All right. That's not too bad. Once again, this is just for quarter one. Returning viewers, shorts, 36.1 thousand. All right. That's not bad at all. What's that? Uh, I can't do the math in my head. I'm too tired. 13.2. So 10% coming back for videos and live streams. Live streams is really where we're getting the consistent return. That's good to know. And that doesn't really surprise me because the YouTube shorts are such a niche or excuse me the kickstarter critiques live streams that i do are such a niche thing that it, that it does make sense that nearly 50 percent of the viewers are coming back okay note to self continue the you continue the kickstarter critique format as is like that number really slaps me in the face with wow people are digging it and it makes sense and once again this is why we're pivoting to a kickstarter consulting agency uh in addition to bowers game corner just being bowers game corner obviously uh subscribers 
YouTube Shorts crushing it there. So live streams, once again, because it's so niche, not really doing it. You know, it's 10% of the shorts. Video's doing well as well. Now, the thing with the videos, you say, well, you haven't put out many videos. That's because it's all in the back end. You know, I've put, I've, I've amassed these thousands and thousands of videos, and they just sit there, and they, they just accumulate subscribers. All right? Impressions and how they led to watch time, this stuff's way over my head. But I'll pause on it for a second in case you understand what it means. And if you do understand it, please let me know in the comments. Viewers across formats. Ooh, shorts only. Hmm. Huh. Okay. So 80% of the people watching my stuff only came here for shorts. Watching both 3%, live only 17%. Okay, how, then how viewers find you, YouTube searches, external. I'm going to guess that's a lot of Board Game Geek since I post all my videos on Board Game Geek. Shorts feed, that's great because uh, that's like um, your short shelf. If you scroll, if you use YouTube on your phone and you scroll far enough, you're inevitably going to see the YouTube shorts, like them or hate them. And that's uh, so 10, 11% of the people are coming from that. Browse features 2.8. That's pretty low. That's good to know. And then top remix. Wait, what? Oh, okay. Three people remixed my How to Play Uno Flex. See, I wish people would let me know these things. And, like, I want to click on it because what this means is three people took this video that I made and they inserted themselves at some point into the video. And YouTube doesn't tell me. They're not like, hey, check out this video. Somebody somebody did your... And that, I think, like is a big... Uh, uh, like... I need, to, I need to write this down. Once again, we're taking notes here. We're running this professionally. How do I find remixes? Because that means three people engaged directly with my YouTube short content about Uno Flex, and they they made their own little cool video on it. And I want to see what they did. I want to see. I want to. I want to. Yeah. How do I check out? What are these called? Uh, remix. And that's, that's a YouTube thing, unfortunately. I wish YouTube would do that, because that's just cool. And as you can see, once again, how to do Uno Flex, 78 views in the last 48 hours. It's consistent. And as long as this game still sold at Walmart, Target, whatever, uh, you know, this is going to be this is gonna be one that people are going to utilize. So that's great. And that honestly me tells me that I need to go find some of the most popular versions of Uno and pop out some YouTube shorts about it. Oops, wrong page. All right. Whew. All right, so we checked out the content tab. Anything interesting here? I don't think so. Concurrent viewers, we had the most uh, 10. Wow. Listen, the last 28 days. Whoopsies. All right, here we go. Uh, most concurrent viewers was 22. That's cool for, uh, I wonder what it was for. For Dante Inferno. I don't even remember that one. Oh, it was a game found. 1.2 million. Cool. No new subscribers, though, which is not kind of... Looking at these numbers, it's not surprising. Audience, returning viewers, unique viewers, subscribers. Cool. Why is this one blurred out? Hmm. And there will be some pauses here, honestly, as I try and decipher some of the stuff. Uh, what your audience watches. I thought I was seeing things for a second there. So Apex Legends content, Apex Legends. We got Alex. Uh, board game content. Should you back expert crowdfunding advice? Oh, wow. Should I put that in mind? Expert crowdfunding advice. 13 new games in 40 minutes. I've seen his hey, face a Chris, lot. Let's do he covers a lot of Kickstarter stuff, too. Uh, cool. Most played games. At yeah, I get it. They're board game stuff and, in particular, crowdfunding stuff and Apex Legends content. That makes sense. Revenue. 940 bucks. Oh, this is cool. This will show you exactly which videos ooh, revenue pages uh, are doing me the best. So how to play Sky Joe the card game has made me $94 since the beginning of the year. That is, and you're like, what the heck is Sky Joe the card game? Sky Joe the card game was a game that I really luckily stumbled onto because I was trying to do research on what videos needed um, video, or excuse me, what games needed videos. I went through Amazon and I was like, all right, what, which one of these games need videos? Sky Joe, Sky Joe Action, the original Wizard Card game. And as you can see, <laughs> I think I hit a winner with this one. Uh, how to play Sky Joe the card game. And I remember buying this and I was like, God, the game's like 20 bucks and I didn't want to buy it. And I'm so glad I did because it's made me $861. This one how to play video, which I posted 882 days ago, and it looks, look at this, this is a consistent evergreen. And as you can see, look right, you see that little bump up right here? 
that's Christmas. You see that little bump up right there? That's Christmas. So that's what I was telling you. Once we get to the holidays, you get these little bump ups right here. And if I go into full gamer mode, which I'm hoping to do by the end of the year, I'm hoping to get back to doing how to play videos and gameplay videos and reviews and all that good stuff, in addition to the paid content, obviously, uh, and the Kickstarter content. I, Hey, chill out, dog. I'll be able to hopefully get like a really bumping holiday season this year but this is exactly why i need to do more skip the rules videos it's just they're they're not incredibly difficult to do and they're evergreens if i pick the right games you know that that's just insanity by the end of the year there's a very good chance this video will made a thousand dollars like it's for sky joe the freaking card game glad i found that one all right, so uh, continuing onward. Man, I hate how it keeps having me go back and forth. Where were we? Audience, revenue. Oh, revenue. Yeah, people like money stuff. So revenue for every 1,000 views. Oh, RPMs. That's some cool stuff. I know Scott, my buddy Scott always interested. So for every 1,000 views, on average, I'm making 458. Now, that obviously is going to be drastically different based on um, what kind of videos you're watching. Because once again, when you look at the the youtube shorts it is minimal money you make it's more on the subscriber count whereas with these how to play videos it's definitely more about the um you're getting more Ooh, so dumb ways to die so that's a gameplay video and this one's interesting as well because this was uh, uh something that we're hoping to do at gen con this year so gen con in the press room has uh all the games pretty much being released at the convention and a lot of games that are coming in the future and you can touch them you can unbox them you can play with them you can feel them and this was literally me me and my buddy adam sitting there for five minutes and 24 seconds because that's how long the game is super short game playing this game and then shooting a gameplay video and i posted it at gen con i believe yeah August, i posted that sucker at gen con because i you know when i do the gen con coverage i try and bring it to you fast hot fresh and it got me 116 bucks and 40 subscribers and it looks like it's going to continue to keep going if this game continues to be popular so that is definitely something that we were talking about doing last year that i want to continue doing and we actually had a plan where you know like adam might go in there and i might go in there and we just read rule booklets one day and then just pop out a whole bunch of gameplay videos and potentially even some how to play videos because I imagine if this was a how to play video, <clears throat> which would not be too terribly difficult to do. Here's the dirty little secret about doing how to play videos. They're not really that hard, you know, uh, it, with lengthier, longer games. I take that back. They are, but for shorter, simple games, they're not hard. You sit down, you read the rules, you play a round or two, which knows the time is going to be pretty simple. And by the end of playing a round or two, you can typically shoot a how to play video. Not to mention the fact that with the how-to-play video, when I do reviews, I try and do them in one shot, one take. I like the raw spontaneity, you know. But with how-to-play videos, you can literally do the setup, and then you can do, like, phase one, and then you can stop, take phase two. You can, you can edit it all together really easily and make it seamless. So um, that's note to self. Yes, that, that's, that's notepad worthy here. I need to continue those... Um, continue game plays at conventions but only for specific specific games because the bottom line is we also did i think a couple games that were like lengthier that were like 40 minutes to an hour long games that we thought were going to potentially be bigs and I, and it just doesn't seem like it's worth it when we can hit a bunch of those smaller games while we're there granted we are going to still be interested in some games and now this is not loading so if all this is not loading, let's go check out my Amazon Associates. Because the other, another way that I make money at Bowers Game Corner is with Amazon Associate links. There's probably one in the description of this video. Where if you click on it and you go buy something on Amazon, I get a small portion of it. As you can see, this is not really where I make much money. In the past 30 days, I made a grand whopping total of 17 cents on 1,105 clicks. So essentially, that means I got 1,105 people to click on links. And one person bought one thing and I earned 17 cents, which is fine. This is, this, I don't, I don't really try too hard on this. It's just something in the back end that just accumulates money. And like, yeah, let's see, payment history. Can I look up? Yeah, so I got $597. So since the beginning of the year, I made a buck 64. But it just keeps pooling up and accumulating. And one day, maybe it'll be, maybe it'll be a vacation. So that, that's how I look at it. Uh, I, I do Amazon Associates, but I don't do it that much. I really don't want to shove Amazon products down your throat. 
and I don't see that changing anytime soon. All right, so how you make money. Watch page ads, 906 bucks. Shorts feed ads, $34. So wow, the shorts feed's really not making much, and that's fine because I get the subscribers on them. How much you're earning, you can see the big bump in September. I made 900 bucks in September. Mm. I only got roughly 1400 nearly 2000 bucks in October through December, and then 900 January through March. And that's fine with me. That's a nice, like, honestly, there are so many YouTubers who would, they would stab someone right now at a gas station for that. Uh, assuming they could, you know, they put on a mask and do it. That's, I shouldn't talk about that. That's how you get demonetized, I guess, talking about stabbing people at gas stations. I meant stab them with kindness. All right, so what is this? Ooh, research. I don't know. Re ooh, well, re wow, what is this? So these are other videos. Oh, I think this is just other videos you look at and you're like, all right, take some ideas from it. Bex Kickstarter board games, horror board games, board games. Okay. All right, that's fine. Let's go check out another way I make money. And that is Fiverr. So since the beginning of... I, now, here's the other thing. Since I started Hero Time Manufacturing, I have pr I have actually turned down numerous Fiverr opportunities. And as you can see, once March started, I was like, all right, I'll start taking some orders. So Fiverr is a great way for me to make money as well. I have... Let's see if I can find it. I have quite a few different services that I offer. And your boy, 4.9. Now, my level is zero. That's because I kind of just let my fiber go to waste but uh, it's like 4.9 out of like 89 reviews or something like that and this is one of those ones where i am going to be climbing up higher because how it works is uh as you climb levels you gain more perks and i got all the way up to level two once but if you get up to level uh, the top rated it's like super duper good and i i have earned nearly ten thousand bucks on fiber uh, i think i'm up to like eight or nine thousand bucks uh, right now, I got $857 in my account. But Fiverr is definitely a viable way for me to make money. And if I really pounded my chest more about my Fiverr, if I were smart, I would be mentioning my Fiverr every day in, like, Kickstarter critique. And it'd be simple. I'd just be like, hey, man, check it out. The link down below. But once again, I don't – I try not to shill too much. I really I, – I, like, I'm happy with where I am. I'm happy – with this slow progressive snowball that I've been pushing up this hill for the last 11 years because about a year and a half to two years ago I finally started to feel the snowball like slowly leaving my hands like oh, oh shoot this this momentum is starting to go and now I know that I can go pick this momentum back up pretty easily I I have my handy dandy professionally made list of the things that I need to focus on to do this I have I have credibility and I have experience i have everything i really need to do to do this and, and once again you're like well why don't you do it you lazy well that's because i'm a stay-at-home dad first and foremost like i told my boss point blank it was like if my work comes in between me being stay-at-home dad or my family if i feel like because i'm not gonna lose my family like it's just like that's not a thing i'm gonna do and i've seen other content creators do it oh my god i've seen i've seen quite a few other content creators because the thing is you can make a lot of money, and the harder you work, the more money you make. But it's just you put stress on your family. And I have three kids. I don't, I don't, I don't want to see my kids on the weekends. I don't want to see my wait. Yeah, I do want to see my kids on the weekends, but not exclusive. You get what I'm saying? And another way I make money, which once again I have never ever put too much time or effort into, is Patreon. And if you support my Patreon, I swear I will love you forever because it's essentially just like you giving me a dollar every month and say, "Hey, here's a dollar. I like you. Go away now." Uh, one day I do plan on doing more with my Patreon. But for the time being, it's just here. And it does accumulate money. I think I got like a thousand or two thousand bucks set up in my account. I make fifty nine bucks a month. It got close to like a hundred dollars a month at one point, but now it's down. All right, so what we're gonna do, I think we're gonna dive a little bit more into my stats, but then we're gonna get to the part where I'm asking for help. Because right here I have what hopefully I'm gonna hand off to Rob, who works at Hero Time Manufacturing, and he's uh He's more like a contractor for Hero Time Manufacturing, which is essentially what I'm going to do. But it's my list of services. I have 30 services that I'm going to offer to you. So essentially, you reach out to Hero Time Manufacturing. You're like, I want to get my game made. And they say, hey, are you crowdfunding or are you just hoping to self-publish? If you're self-publishing, then you're not going to talk to me. However, if you're crowdfunding, once you get your quote, once you get to a certain point along the process, they'll say, hey, do you want to talk to our Kickstarter in-house consultants agency or whatever they're going to call me? And then they're going to talk to me. And that's when these services are going to come into play. You'll, you'll very quickly understand, um, I think, a little bit of how it works. So, ooh, podcast. Yeah, so let's look into this. Because this is one thing that I was very curious about. 
podcasts. Uh, so this was something introduced to YouTube, I think about a year or two ago, where essentially what you could do if you clicked on a certain button was your video would be both a video on YouTube, like normal, but you could also make it into a podcast where people could just listen to your video. And I, may, I make it so all my Kickstarter critiques are podcasts, and those have gotten 20.8 thousand views since the beginning of this year, which... That's not that's not nothing right there. That's uh that's good thing that's a good thing to know. I don't know what I can really do with that, but I like knowing it. Listen to the rules. Wow, 1.2 thousand views. So that was a series that I tried to get off the ground that I just kind of let die. But this is where I quite literally just read the rules to games. And I was like, all right, maybe people will dig this. Maybe people won't dig this. And for the most part, people didn't dig it. And it was a lot more work than I really wanted it to be. This is my magnum opus, I would say. I read the rules to Blood on the Clock Tower, which is two hours long. And here's the bottom line. That's consistent gross. You know, it's not earning me quite what I'd like to. You know, I always like to, I always talk about how I like the nickels and dimes. I'll take nickels and dimes every day of the week. And, uh, you know, those are nickels and dimes. That was a lot of work, though. Let's see how much this video has earned overall. I'm just curious. 757, yeah. So how to play videos are just a way better viable use of my time, to be honest with you. Because because if I made a how to play video of Blood on the Clock Tower, that thing would probably have earned a couple hundred bucks, to be quite frank. Uh, I don't know why I need to be quite frank. I can be quite Dan. Whatever. All right. So, um, so we got the podcast stuff. Let's try and I'm gonna try and dig into these. This is where you're gonna see a bunch of charts that are kind of scary. Come with me. Bear with me. Let's go. But this is honestly where the meat and potatoes, where a lot of really cool, useful information is. So right now we have since the beginning of the year, and we're gonna see uh, which one's gotten me most subscribers. Let's go. How to play War of the Card Game, YouTube Short. How to play Guess Who the Card Game, YouTube Short. That's 100 subscribers since the beginning of the year, and both those videos are not new. June 14, 2023, January 12, 2023. This is this is YouTube slapping me in the face and saying, get on these, idiot. Make more of these now because they're not hard. Actually, they're not easy either. And the reason why is shooting a how to play video in one minute and trying to make it informative is really difficult. Uh, how to play snakes and ladders. That's good to know because this was actually, oh God, this is, uh, what, what's the name of the company? I want to, I want to talk some trash about this company real quick. It is dag nabbit. Dang it. I want to, oh, all right. I'm going to look them up real quick because I want to talk some trash about them real quick. Uh, because essentially what they did, and it's a company that's in our spear. I think it's Goliath maybe. Ah, oh, crap. Yeah, I'm going to look this up real quick, just because I want you to know how crappy they are. I made a YouTube short about how crappy they were once. Uh, where is it? Snakes and Ladders board game. Here it is. So, this company right here, a bunch of No, I can't find it. Well, crap, if you go to Walmart, you're going to see a bunch of games that look like complete and utter blatant ripoffs of mass market popular games. Uh, there's like one that's like a blatant ripoff of Sorry. There's one that's a blatant ripoff of Hi-Ho Cherry. And you're like, all right, whatever, Force. I do this all the time. But the bottom line is... They're in Walmart, they're right next to the actual games, and they undercut them on price. And I think I think it is Goliath Games. So I'm just going to talk trap about Goliath Games, and that's fine. If they don't like it, well, bring it up with my receptionist. Uh, but yeah, they, they pretty much just stole those ideas. They made some minor tweaks here or there, some tiny little things, and then they, they undercut them, and it's like, wow. And, and the bottom line is, you're like, oh, who cares? They're undercutting this mass market Hasbro, blah, blah. It's, it's just the principle. It's the principle. Why can't I do that? I can do that to Ticket to Ride. I can do that to Munchkin. I can do that to Pandemic. I can make a, a cheaper version of that game and, and put it out. And it's just, it's icky. I, I don't like, I don't like it. <laughs> I just don't like it. So yeah, I want to talk some trash about them. Uh, but yeah, this one right here, once again, a short how to play video. And it's got me 13 subscribers. All right, fun. All right. Uh, anything else we want to look at here? Where are, those, where are all those charts? Oh, it's right here. Yeah, let's back it up a little bit. But I am going to take you while we're waiting to my favorite part of my analytics page, which is right here, the real time. Because this is where you can really get a sense for what's happening at Bowers Game Quarter. So in the last 48 hours, uh, the biggest one was how to play War of the Card Game, and then they also show you the last 60 minutes. Uh, the, the cleaning stuff. Look at this. So late last year, I had a video go huge for me. Viral, I guess you'd say. Five million views. If you consider that viral, I do. 
Uh, and, and it was a plumbing video. It was a YouTube short I did on a plumbing video. So I was like, let's see if I could catch lightning in a bottle. And I made a whole bunch more plumbing videos. And 52 subscribers <laughs> for plumbing videos. I don't know what to do with that. Oh, YouTube shorts are fun. All right. How to play snakes and ladders. How do I get back? Oh, here's how I get back. I feel like I'm just meandering. I feel like an old man. Here we go. Here we go. And I apologize. Like I said, I haven't done this segment in a minute. So I don't remember how to navigate all this back end stuff with all these graphs and whatnot. Uh, subscribers, estimated revenue. Yeah, so let's check out the subscribers. Then I'm going to go through the services and just hopefully get your feedback on that. How, and this was a video game YouTube short. I do kind of want to know how that one did. How to play Moose Master, how to play Uno Flex, how to play. Oh, and then here we go. YouTube shorts, 10 subscribers. 10 subscribers, 10 subscribers. Okay. And as you can see, just how to play, how to play, how to play, how to play, how to play. This is this is me saying I should make more how to play videos. Just period. Because at the end of the day, these are the most popular videos by how many subscribers I got since the beginning of the year. And none of these videos, not a single one of these how to play videos I have made since the beginning of the year. It's just... They, they do well. They do well for a long time. And the reason why is the games never go away. Even though a game might die down in popularity, it's still out there. People still have copies sitting in a closet. They still don't want to read the rules. And the other thing is, yeah, I used to do these YouTube shorts of uh, Spy Kids 3D video game games. Over one hour and I'd shoot them with my Ooh, phone. Like, this was slots? me playing a Game the Boy original... Advance game. And it's it's getting, uh, it's getting five subscribers since the beginning of the year. I'll take that. Not to mention, I love playing video games. All right. So, big takeaway from that is keep doing YouTube shorts. I'm going to do all the other stuff, too. Honestly, while they don't do big numbers, they don't do spectacular, my reviews and whatnot, they help build the credibility. You know, I can say, oh, I've reviewed this many number of games. And maybe one day they will pick up. Maybe one day I'll find out the secret formula to make these the, the reviews more popular. But at the end of the day, there's so many people doing reviews that it's, it's hard to get... It's, hard, it's easy to get lost in the crowd. So... That's how much I made. Ooh, see live count. Look at that. Nice steady trickle upward. And you wanna see you wanna see where you wanna see where the plumbing video came in? There's the plumbing video. <laughs> That's an Apex Legends video too. That's when I was like, oh, maybe I should do more video game content. Alright. But now, let's talk about services. And this is where I would love your help. So if you've stuck around this far, I sincerely I love you. I appreciate you because right now what I'm gonna talk about is hopefully gonna be the rest of my life to be honest with you this this is an amazing opportunity and i actually i do it uh, i do a podcast the uh, actually every wednesday night i'll be there tonight the alabooms uh the the alaboom the weekly alaboom it's on lance meister's undead viking channel uh he's one of the ogs of board game reviews and it's on every wednesday night and they're really concerned because the bottom line is i don't get paid I'm, I'm hero time kind of fired me but they kind of promoted me and they kind of moved me over to the side and either way i'm super excited because now i get to work on myself it's like when you get dumped and you're like oh yeah now i can work on myself that's legitimately how i feel about it and when i completed this and you'll see it's really lengthy i have 30 services that i plan on offering customers so here's the gist of it i told you hero time's gonna reach out you're gonna say i got a game i got a kickstarter game they're gonna get you a quote if you if you if you want to keep working with the company they'll say all right, would you like to talk to our in-house Kickstarter consulting agency, Bowers Game Corner? So I'll read this off to you, and please, if you see anything that seems odd, because once again, I love artificial intelligence, and I use ChatGPT to write up a bunch of these. Now, I did obviously read through them, and I did them one by one. It's not like I pumped out 30 and said, they look good, and skimmed through them. No, I went one by one. I've been doing this over like the last two or three weeks. But let's just get into it. Let's not bury the lead here. I'm good with a shovel. <clears throat> with over a decade of experience since launching my YouTube channel in 2011, I've become a seasoned veteran in the board game community, reviewing over 1,300 board games, deeply analyzing more than 1,000 Kickstarter campaigns, interviewing over 1,000 designers slash publishers about games, and seeing the industry from just about every perspective. I really have, and I love it. I love this industry so much. My passion for gaming and crowdfunding excellence drives me to share insights and advice, helping creators bring their visions to life. My approach blends thorough analysis with a genuine love for the hobby, making me a trusted voice for both new and experienced game developers and game developers navigating the kickstarter landscape i offer my services on fiber as well however going through hero time will get you a significant discount 
true. I don't know if my boss wants me to mention that. Once again, I'm going to run this all by my boss before we get it made into a really nice looking menu. That's the plan. It's going to be like a menu. They'll send you the PDF and it's going to have like a full list of services right here. Oh yeah. 81 reviews, 4.9 stars on Fiverr. People typically tend to like my work because if you pay me to do something, I try to do my best on it. Um, the service has a star next to it. Please discuss with me to make sure it's feasible with your game. Because once again, if you have a three-hour game, I'm not going to be touching your how-to-play video. I don't care. <laughs> like, no thanks. I don't want that stress. Then all video service about your game will be added to your Board Game Geek page. Because a lot of people just don't get that whole system. I've arranged these services to align with the periods most Kickstarter creators commonly need them. However, I can adjust to suit your unique requirements and schedule. If you have any questions, special requests, or service ideas that don't hesitate to ask, I'm here to ensure flexibility and support, and likewise to you. If you say, you know, I think you could offer this service, I am all ears for that. Because the more services I can offer, the more chances that you're going to be like, ooh, I like that service. So if we've got to break it down into three categories, pre-launch services, Midstream services, mid campaign services, and then post launch services. There's not many post launches, you'll see. So, consultation this is what essentially what everybody's going to have. This is just where we set up a Zoom meeting, delve into a reservoir of expertise. Jesus, you can, you can hear the chat GPT coming out. Delve into a reservoir of expertise of the board game industry and Kickstarter campaign strategies. This session will be focusing on campaign narrative, stretch goals, pledge levels, and any other aspect you wish to explore. Whether at the planning stage or during the campaign, this service offers the flexibility to adapt to your needs. Choose from a 30-minute introductory session or a more thorough one-hour discussion. If one hour doesn't fully cover your project's breadth, follow-up consultations are available to ensure comprehensive support. And now, how I believe this is going to work is Hero Time Manufacturing is trying to set itself apart from other manufacturers by essentially footing the bill for a couple hours of your Kickstarter game. So if you reach out to Kickstarter and my boss is like, wow, I think this game's going to do really well. He'll be like, yeah, I'm going to give you like, say three or four hours Kickstarter consultation service with this guy. So he's essentially going to pay me for those three hours, but it's going to be a service that he's banking on is going to make you more money and going to make you like Hero Time Manufacturing more, which is awesome. <clears throat> so the next one, we have an in-depth unboxing one hour, or two hours for more complex games. And they're like, what? Uh, so, I will have an hourly rate. I don't know if my boss wants me to tell you what it is, but I am very happy with my hourly rate. Uh, I normally try and be incredibly transparent with that kind of thing, but since someone else is going to be paying me, I don't know if they want me doing it. But needless to say, I am smitten, and I've never made this much money before in my life as my hourly rate, except when I worked overtime at some places. Uh, so dive deeper into your game with an in-depth unboxing video that doesn't just showcase component, but educates viewers on their significance within the gameplay. So essentially, this is going to be an unboxing where I'm going to read the entire rule booklet. I'm going to be sorting out all the different components. I'm going to figure out all the different components and how they work in conjunction with the game. And then it's an unboxing video where I talk about all the different components and how they work during the flow of the game. I used to do regular unboxings, and I hate them. I hate them deep down in my soul. I think they're the lowest common denominator of making YouTube content, and I judge people for making them on a regular basis, despite the fact I made them on a regular basis, and yes, I judge myself. Prior to filming, I meticulously, <laughs> I meticulously study a rule booklet. I guess they're just, they're just, who wants an unboxing video most of the time? And they're dead. They're dead videos once regular, like, for the most part, they're dead videos once gameplay videos come out, once reviews come out, and hell, once previews come out. So it's just, yeah. Uh, I meticulously study a rule booklet to accurately, accurately present each piece's role and functionality, ensuring viewers not only see what's in the box, but understand how it contributes to the game experience. This service is perfect for creators who want to highlight the thoughtfulness of their game design and give potential backers a comprehensive look at what makes their game special. Now, I don't like leading off with this service as the second one, because I think it's a really crappy service. I don't think most people are going to take it, but I do know there's going to be some people who take it, especially those people who have the super nice prototypes they want to show off, where they spent like $600 on their prototype so it's here whatever pre-launch prepper video the pre-launch prepper service includes preparing a video based on your kickstarters campaigns paid uh ooh, did that does that sound right the pre-launch prepper service involves preparing a video based on your kickstarters campaign page pre-launch primarily when it's around 75 to 80 percent complete this service aims to deeply analyze your kickstarter page from top to bottom it's essentially an early kickstarter critique where i'm a lot nicer just because you're not this isn't your page. Like, this is your work in progress page. It's it's more of like, hey, here's a bunch of ideas. Now, if you don't take those ideas and you're like, ah, I'm, I don't need a video. Well, then, yeah, when it comes to Kickstarter critique time, then I'm going to I'm gonna be flaming you for not putting up a video. 
but this one is much more pre-launch stuff. I'll be offering feedback, advice, ideas, and looking for any errors that might have slipped through the cracks. This video could be for your eyes only, or with your consent, it could be on my YouTube page to widen your project's reach, build anticipation, send people to your pre-launch page, and gather initial feedback from others. I expect this one to be a very popular level that a lot of people do, and I imagine um, that Hero Time is probably going to foot the bill for, for this one, and this one for a lot of people. I imagine I'm going to be doing a lot of these two particularly. And then how it works is, once you've had that consultation, once you've got the pre-launch prepper, and you're like, whoa, ahoy, Ricardo, this guy kind of kind of knows way more than I probably do about Kickstarter, which I I don't want to toot my own horn, but I spend a lot of time on the website. Um, then essentially they'll be like, oh, I want some more of these services. And they'll be like, oh, it totals up to eight hours. It's going to cost you this much. And then bada boom. That's how it works. Uh, Playtesting consultation service. This The game's maximum link, which is something that I was really struggling with how to do this with a lot of these videos because it's like, you can't just say, oh, a how-to-play video costs you $200 because if it's a 15-minute game, I don't need $200 to make that. Whereas if it's a three-hour game, oh, no, that's not enough money. Like, there's levels to this. So I figured out, this was the idea that I came to, the game's maximum link plus 30 minutes, minimum one hour, double the cost to convert this level into a gameplay video I post on my channel. Because if it's a gameplay video I post on my channel, I got to be on. I got to be entertaining. I got to worry about production value. Whereas otherwise, if it's just literally me playtesting your game and giving you feedback on your game, which is super valuable. I actually just did this for another customer without even playtesting their game. They just vividly, I, I read the rule booklet for him and I was like, ooh, you should do this. This is going to give your game six times more content. And he was like, oh my God, why didn't I think of that? It's a party game. And they had one game. They had one. So essentially it's a party game where on each card is going to be a word. And I was like, why don't you just put six words on the card and then spend the extra one and a half cent to have a D6 in there. You roll the D6 at the beginning of every round. And then there's six potential things. And he's like, oh my gosh, it's just. Ahoy, Ricardo. I'm glad you could join. Uh, so, pre-launch prepper video. We got the place. Uh, dive deeper into your game's potential with the gameplay consultation service where you teach me your game, either online or in person. This session is a chance for you to present your game directly to an experienced gamer with a keen understanding of what makes games successful. I've seen a lot of games come and a lot of games go. Um, after the playthrough, I will provide honest, detailed feedback, insights, and suggestions based on my extensive experience with thousands of games. This service is ideal for developers seeking to refine their game's mechanics, balance, and player engagement, ensuring your game is the best it could be before hitting the market. Uh, I don't know how interested people are going to be in this service, but quite honestly, I hope this service goes over like gangbusters because it's just, hey, teach me your game and then I'll give you my thoughts on it, and I'm more than happy to do that all the live long day. So next we have the preview video service. Ugh, if you watch this channel routinely, especially the Kickstarter critiques, I hate previews for the most part. I think it's essential to have one on your gameplay page, and I think I should put that uh, right down here. It's essential you have at least one of these on your gameplay page. Let me know what you think about that. But people just expect it. Uh, this one's going to cost three times the game's maximum length, minimum one hour. Capture the essence of your game with a compelling preview video, expertly craft to engage and excite potential backers. Leveraging a deep understanding of the board game community and Kickstarter dynamics, I'll produce a video that highlights your game's unique features, gameplay mechanics, and the passion behind its creation. That one sounds like I'm blowing some smoke up your butt there. Yeah, I don't like how that one sounds. That's a thing that I actually had to do pretty routinely with ChatGPT because all these descriptions, for the most part, ChatGPT, and then I'd go in there and I'd tinker and tinker and tinker with it. Um, and I have to be like, dude, just stop. Stop talking so like this. This just isn't how I talk, but I think it sounds fine. Ideal for the Kickstarter campaigns or promotional efforts, this service is designed to generate buzz and showcase your game in action, making it irresistible to your target audience. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, Kickstarter relaunch analysis interview. This one's going to be an interesting one. I really hope people pick this one because I would love to talk to people about this sort of stuff. Hey, see, goody. And I think people who like my Kickstarter content are really going to uh, dig some of these interviews that I'm hoping to do. Yeah, because a lot of people have suggested stuff just like this. For creators facing the challenge of a Kickstarter campaign that didn't meet its initial goal, our Kickstarter relaunch analysis interview offers a constructive path forward. In this in-depth session, we dissect your previous campaign page together, identifying what resonated with backers and what fell short. Oh my gosh, I love ChatGPT sometimes. It sounds, just sounds so much smarter than me. Uh, this interview-style analysis provides a platform for reflection and learning, focusing on actionable insights and strategic advice to refine 
refine your approach for a successful relaunch. God, there's no way those words could ever come out of my mouth without a computer helping. By examining key elements such as a campaign messaging, reward structure, and marketing efforts, we'll collaboratively develop a stronger, more engaging campaign strategy. If you've ever watched one of those segments uh, where, where it's like, oh, looks like we're having a Kickstarter autopsy, that's pretty much what this is going to be, except with the designer themselves hopefully they're going to be blunt they're going to be honest and we're going to get some really interesting feedback on what worked for people and what didn't work for people and just by doing that i feel like my personal knowledge is just going to grow so much about kickstarter stuff i am so excited for this service and i hope it gets picked uh, from people quite a few times, because I, I think it would just be fascinating. The service is essential for creators ready to turn past hurdles into future triumphs. Oh, that sounds so good. It also doubles as a great advertising tool for people interested in your game and the Kickstarter process. I love that. Blind playtest video service. I see a lot of people do this. I see people do this on Fiverr, and now I'm getting it on this pie because it's super easy. And here it's your game's clarity and intuitive this with the blind playtest video service. I'll dive into your game with fresh eyes using only the rule booklet to learn and play. Throughout the process, I'll record my thoughts, questions, and decision making out loud, providing you with invaluable insights into how players interpret your rules and interact with your game. I pound my chest so freaking hard. You need to blind play test your game and you're like we did play i do you know i have had i'm not i'm not being hyperbolic here i've had 50 game designers saying yeah we play test we, we play tested we play tested a bunch i said but did you blind play test it like what i mean i've legitimately had designers say what? do you mean like i played it with blind people no that's not what i mean i mean did you hand them the rules and did you walk away and see what mistakes they made because that's how you get a better rule booklet you let you and it's scary it is so scary to just hand somebody a rule booklet and say all right try and figure it out and it's asking a lot, obviously, too. Uh, but essentially, I'm just going to set up a camera, and I'm going to talk out loud about how I'm playing the game. And that, that's really all this service is, and it's super valuable for a lot of people. And uh, hopefully I can find those people. Uh, and with Hero Time sending people to me, I think I will be able to. I love all this. Inside Baseball is always fun. Oh, then you'll enjoy it. I I'm hoping to do more behind-the-corner segments. I used to do one every single month, breaking down how much money I made. Uh, and, and what was popular and what I need to focus more on. And I do plan on getting back to that. Because once I said, well, like I said, starting April 1st, we're pivoting, we're pivoting hard to, to Buyer's Game Corner. I used to have, like, tons and tons of leads that I'd be working with, people at Hero Time Manufacturing that was helping them make their games, um, working on quotes and whatnot, you know, that sort of thing. Like, oh, do you want engraved dice? Do you want screen printed dice? Now this is what I'm doing. This service is essential for creators ready to turn past hurdles. Oh, nope, here we go. This service is a powerful tool for identifying areas of confusion and opportunities for improvement, ensuring your final product is accessible and engaging as possible. Bingo. Love it. Rulebook consultation. This, honestly, full disclosure, this is what I would love to do for the rest of my life. And I and I, I do this on my Fiverr, and it's very, very popular. I've only had, like, one negative review. Two, actually. One, because somebody had super thin skin, so whatever get bent uh and the second person was because for some reason a b so how it works is you send me a pdf of your rule booklet and then i just scribble 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 write down all the notes that i could possibly think about about how to improve the rule booklet how it reads if it's redundant like this feels redundant right here maybe could we get lose this section do we really need like that sort of stuff like this this piece of art is stupid like i don't say that but like this is a useless space right here it doesn't help me learn the game but that's essentially what this is <clears throat> so essentially, I read your rule booklet and I give you tons and tons of feedback. I don't edit it because I nearly flunked high school, but it's super valuable from everyone who I've talked to about it. Elevate your game with expert rulebook feedback from a seasoned board game reviewer. The service offers detailed analysis and suggestion for improving clarity, engagement, and accessibility based on reading thousands of rule booklets. I provide actionable insights to refine your game's instructions without editing the text myself. And why I love this one so much is that I can do this anywhere. Because as soon as I download your PDF, on my iPad, I have literally done this while me and my family were about to go tobogganing. We were we were in a car because this was during COVID, and I was working on this. And I actually I finished one while I was just sitting in my car waiting to ride a toboggan with my family. It's I can do this on a beach. I can do this anywhere I want. It's I and that's really why I'm excited about these Kickstarter consultation thing. Is most of these things I can do anywhere. And my dream is to pull a Richard Ham, a.k.a. a Rondo, and drive around the country in my RV with my family and my wife once once my kids uh, retire, once we or once my wife retires, <clears throat> and do this sort of stuff. 
Insights into common fitballs and rulebook design and how to avoid them, ensuring your rules are accessible to both new and experienced players. Perfect for designers aiming for a seamless player experience for the first read. I gotta say, so far, I'm pretty impressed with this. Um, I like it so far. What we love video. Four times the game's maximum length, minimum one hour. I will say this one was a direct recommendation from my boss. My boss was very hands-off about the services that I offer, but there were three that he specifically wanted me to mention. This is one of them. <clears throat> I don't particularly like the idea for this video just because I feel it feels very shillish to me, but I do think it's actually a good idea for a video, and I think people might like it. And it might get even cheaper. I don't know. What We Love video is an inviting showcase that brings the essence of your board game to the forefront. This video will be me and my game night spotlighting what we loved about your game, interweaving live gameplay with our in-depth commentary. So essentially, it's just going to be the pros, what we enjoyed about the game, and then it's going to splice to when we were actually playing the game, and you'll get to see real-life examples of what we're talking about. So for instance, uh, I'll give you one example right now. Let's go to Japan. It, it, I'm, I'm hoping to do like a game of the month feature sometime soon. My game of the month for this month is Let's Go to Japan from AEG. One of the things I really like about this game <clears throat> is that I take very fast turns. So if anyone at the table has analysis paralysis, I'm just like, oh, God. You know, it's just because I don't think too much when I take my turns. However, Let's Go to Japan has these really cool little blurbs on every single card telling you about these different tourist attractions in Japan. And so I love that aspect of the game. Because I was never bored because I was always learning about this vacation that I was planning to Japan. Like it's, oh. And so what I would do is I'd say, one of my favorite things about this game was it, analysis paralysis was at a minimum because of X, Y, and Z. And then boom, it seamlessly cuts to us playing the board game and me just like, ooh, look at this. This does this or this does that thing. And it's an idea for a video. It's my boss's idea. I actually do think it's a pretty good idea. Um, and it's four times the game's maximum listed length, which is a little bit more expensive than the other ones. And I, and I've, and I do have this, so it's going to get more expensive as we go down, for the most part. <clears throat> because, A, it requires numerous people to be there. Like, this is going to be my game night crew, for the most part. Or if it's a family game, as you'll see my family doing it. B, it's going to be a multiple camera setup. And I have dabbled in this in the past, the multiple camera setup. However, my boss is buying me a new iPad. Because uh, that's what I do all my video and editing on. And I'm super excited, by the way. This is something I'm really excited about. Uh, I'm not getting the newest iPad, which they're about to announce in a couple weeks. But I am getting the newest iPad that's out, which is going to allow me to upgrade from iMovie to Final Cut Pro. Now, I have to pay like 50 bucks a year for Final Cut Pro. But it, it essentially is going to up my potential editing game just massively. Which I'm very excited about because I know a lot of people make money editing videos. They just, they just make tons. So, um, all right. this approach ensures a genuine and captivating perspective, making it an ideal way to draw in potential buyers. For those creations that also cater to family, fun, or a younger audience, we're excited to include my family in the gameplay, demonstrating your game's appeal across various age groups. Rest assured, this video will be a wholly positive celebration of what makes your game special, designed to resonate with viewers and have a lasting, favorable impression. But for those of you who are like, oh, Bowers is shill now, just like... There's a star next to this one, because if I hate your game and I think your game sucks, and I legitimately don't think there's anything that we loved about this, I won't do the video. <laughs> like, I put the star next to it because I could be like, sorry, I just couldn't get my game night together. But really, it's like, if this game sucks hot garbage, I'm not going to make a What We Love video on it. You will never see a What We Love video if I didn't, at the bare minimum, like the game. My kids love the game. That's a different story. But with this, I wanted to make sure that I was not delving into the land of shilling rule book narration video service i can't imagine this one's going to be too popular but i talked about it a little bit earlier where i just essentially read the rule book out loud there's a market somewhere for this i guess we'll see we'll see if people back it offer your audience an alternative way to learn your game with a rule booklet narration video service i will meticulously read your game Ooh, ooh! this needs to be mentioned that this is also a podcast because that's i think is a selling point to some people you know, especially if you're a game designer and you like podcasts, like you listen to podcasts a lot, I think that might um, podcast. So what is this? The podcast narration. Yeah, I need to mention that on the thing. Dump. All right. Um, this service is perfect for reaching a broader audience, including visually impaired players and ensuring everyone has access to your game's instruction. It's a thoughtful addition to your game's resources, making learning the rules as inclusive and straightforward as possible. But the bottom line is, from my perspective, it's a super easy video. I literally just set up the camera so that you can see every page. Uh, when, and then I turn the page and I read it out loud. And that's it. I just have to make sure my voice doesn't go out like it did with Blood on the Clock Tower because it was a two-hour video. 
right. Reviewer Liaison Service. I love that word. Streamline your outreach with the Reviewer Liaison Service, where I leverage my extensive network to get your game or prototype in the hands of content creators. Simply specify your budget. That could be zero. And I'll handle the logistics from identifying suitable reviewers to providing shipping details and cost estimates. This service ensures your game receives the visibility it deserves, aligning with creators who can best highlight the unique qualities to their audience. So essentially, say, I got six prototypes. I, I don't know how to get it into people's hands. I say, I gotcha. How much money are you looking to spend? Bingo. And I can get that done. And it's not hard. It's not hard. There's a there's a Facebook group. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> they where literally I'll say, hey, anybody interested in this game? And there'll be like three or four people like, yeah, I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it. I want it. I want it. Like uh, <clears throat> my friend Anthony uh, made this comparison many years ago. I thought it was fantastic. If you've ever seen Finding Nemo, there's like a scene where all these seagulls are like, mine, 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 with like some food. And that's essentially what this Facebook, this, this reviewer group is. And I'm not saying that in a negative way. I was the same way when I first got into the hobby too. When you're first getting into the hobby, review copies are like the most amazing thing ever. These free games that come in the mail. It's like, yeah, of course I'm excited. I'm going to play this game and make videos on this game. Um, so this is a very easy service for me to do. I hope people take it. And it's one I thought I'd offer. Ideal for designers me seeking to maximize exposure without the hassle of managing multiple contacts and negotiations. There's going to be so many people like, yeah, whatever. Just handle it for me. Throw that extra two hours onto the pile. Because the goal is you go through this and you're like, all right, I, I think I want 14 hours worth of your service. And that is essentially... Half my work week, because I, I told my boss, I am only working 30 hours a week. This will not get in the way of me being stay-at-home dad. Because right now, my daughter is to the point where Jiminy Christmas, every day is something new. She blew my mind just this morning. She got picked up uh, by, by her Mimi, because she picks her up uh, once or twice a week, because she just now uh, retired. She put her boot on by herself. I was so proud. Like, this is just, ah! A proud dad moment because we've been working on it for so much like huh first we do this and then we do that and i went outside it's like let's go find your boots and she went and she found her boots and i was like we can't find one of your boots we can't find one of your boots I was like where's your other boot where's your other boot amelia and that's because it was on her foot and it was actually on the right foot too because we've really been focusing on left and right it's way above her pay grade but i always like try that's one of my things i used to be an early childhood education teacher my degree is actually in early childhood education i got a bachelor's in it <clears throat> and yeah enough anyway Enough talking about my daughter. We're here talking about Kickstarter. All right. Gameplay video cost. Uh, so the cost equals... Ooh, that's weird. I, don't, I need to get rid of that cost. We'll fix that in post. Uh, four times the game's maximum length. Minimum two hours. The gameplay video service is essential for any Kickstarter campaign, providing a clear, engaging demonstration of your game in action. I've done hundreds, maybe a thousand gameplay videos in my time. So this, needless to say, is obviously a bread and butter one here. And if you're running a Kickstarter, you absolutely need a gameplay video. And if I'm lucky, you'll be like, I want a gameplay video. I want two, in fact. One solo, one regular. Be still my beating heart, because that's easy money right there. Recognized as a must-have by seasoned creators, a gameplay video significantly enhances your project's page, giving potential backers a tangible sense of what to expect. We recommend including both a multiplayer overview to capture the full experience and if your game supports it, a solo mode playthrough to showcase its versatility. I can't wait till the first person's like, yeah, I want both of them. <clears throat> Be like, oh, it's a 90-minute game? Cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. That's 720 hours. No, 720 minutes of work, which is eight hours. Yes, please. This service aims to deliver a concise, informative video that highlights the core mechanics and appeal of your game. Designer diary interview. Two hours. <clears throat> bring the story of your game's development to life with a designer diary interview. I'm actually really excited about this. I know a lot of people like designer diaries. I've never personally been that person, but I'm excited to do these and put my own unique spin on them. And it might not be a unique spin. I shouldn't say that. I don't watch the other ones, so it might just be copying somebody else's format. This is a designer interview that goes well beyond the game slash mechanics. Through a blend of carefully selected pre-planned questions and dynamic follow-ups based on your unique journey, we aim to capture the story of your game. This service is perfect for designers looking to share their passion, challenges, and triumphs, creating a captivating narrative that deeply connects with the gaming community and hopefully your future backer. And I believe that the words board game geek should be somewhere in here. I'm going to write that down on my fancy. 720 minutes is 12 hours for those of us in use, man. Woo! Oh, Murr just got me even more excited. Thank you, Murr. That's that's even more than eight. I can do that math. Uh, but yes, I believe the word board game geek really needs to be in this desire, designer diary interview. Because if this is your first uh, Kickstarter, you might not know like who this video is for. This one definitely feels like the, the board game geeks type of video. And I know that they're more popular at board game geek than they are, I think, anywhere, probably anywhere else. All right. So let me write that down. Designer diary, I want to mention... 
Board Game Geek somewhere in that description. So I'll go into ChatGPT and I'll say, hey, take this, but then add that it's great for board game geekers. And ChatGPT, and I'll give me three options. It'll pop out three, and I'll figure out which one I like, and boom, we'll replace that. Kickstarter Video Liaison Service. Now, this one I'm very intrigued about. I'm not sure how it's going to work. And let's, let's go behind the corner. So I was walking around the Gamma Trade Show, which is the trade show where um, pretty much tons of publishers go, tons of manufacturers go, tons of people who run the friendly local game stores go, and they just rub elbows and business deals are made of plenty. And one of the tables I was walking by, and I had a lot of people reach out to me like, oh, hey, hey, Boris, hey, that, like, just because like, I like your work. They just would be like, hey, I appreciate what you do kind of thing. And I got to say, Jiminy Christmas. I try to have a minimal ego, but my ego got blown up so big at Gamma. Uh, it was just refreshing, too, because when you put out negative content, as I do a lot of times with the Kickstarter critiques, yes, you could say constructive, but let's be quite frank, sometimes they're negative. Um, you're always like, oh, is there another shoe that's going to drop? And I've had that shoe drop a couple times. Breaking games will not work with me anymore. <laughs> You know, like, there's some companies like, no, F you. I don't like this content. Shut up. Um, and that's, that it is what it is. Uh, yeah, ChatGPT, I love it. All right, let's go uh, unlock the door to premium. Oh, but one of the tables that I walked by actually had three of the largest Kickstarter video creators, period. Like, the people, you know, when you go to a, a Kickstarter and there's, like, that video, Oniro was actually one of the people at the table who just did a video yesterday for uh, Boss Monster. And they were like, oh, we really love your, your stuff, which makes sense to me now that I thought about it. It's like nobody else is really reviewing these videos specifically. So I imagine that that's a kick when someone reviews your video. <clears throat> but unlock the door to premium Kickstarter video production with a Kickstarter video liaison service. Thanks to my extensive experience of Kickstarter personal connections with some of the top video creators in the industry, I can match you with the perfect fit for your project. Simply provide a description of your vision and the desired video length, and I'll connect you with a video expert who can transform your idea into a compelling visual story that captivates backers and boosts your campaign. Note, big, bold, top quality is expensive and in demand. I am just a middleman on this level. I'll get you talking to the right person, though. This is my way of saying, hey, if it doesn't work out, I'm still getting paid because I got you in the door. I got you talking to these people. Maybe you didn't like their price, but hey, it is what it is. I'm not sure how popular that one's going to be, uh, but <clears throat> if you don't put it up there, nobody's going to take it. That's what I always say about Kickstarter as well. If you don't have that massive stupid pledge that I look at, I say, this is stupid. Why would anyone want this? And then I see six people backed it and I'm like, well, there you go. You made $1,300. Nobody's going to take it if you don't put it up there. Game designer under fire. Wow. So this one... I am really interested. This is one of those ones that was straight from my boss. <clears throat> because my boss kind of likes how constructive I am in my videos. Dive into the heart of your game's appeal with Game Designer Under Fire, a must-watch video challenge where you, the designer, defend the value and uniqueness of your game to Forrest Bauer, the creator's advocate. Oh my god. Just reading that out loud makes me cringe. But he likes it, and I don't honestly think it's a terrible idea i think it's a really interesting concept for a video this session offers a platform to articulate what sets your game apart and why it deserves a spot on the board game community's radar a board game geek community's radar it's more than an interview it's an opportunity to connect with your audience through the tough incisive questioning of one of their own i don't know how it's going to go with some people and i don't know how how much i should go at some people because there's going to be some games where i'm like well, this game looks a lot like this other game. Have you played this? And they're going to be like, no. And they'll be like, well, it's very highly rated. What does your game do different from this? And I can't even say, you know, it's going to be weird. It's going to be a weird session. I think it's going to be really entertaining, really interesting. I don't know if people are going to want it, but uh, it's here. <laughs> I hope somebody takes it. <clears throat> we have a full how to play video service eight times the game's maximum listed length minimum two hours masterfully guide potential players through your game with a full how to play video and once again when i do these i try to make it so you don't have to go to the rule booklet except for maybe a couple times here and there scattered about designed to succinctly teach the rules and demonstrate gameplay mechanics i bring your game to life walking viewers through setup and turn structure ensuring they grasp both the basics and nuances of play this essential service caters to backers and new players alike offering a clear and engaging tutorial that enhances understanding and excitement for your game making an invaluable addition to your promotional toolkit this is the golden crown of videos on a Kickstarter page. I 100% believe that. And if this gets taken, I'm excited, especially if your game's easy. If your game's not easy, well then, that, that little star there is going to do a lot of work. 
<clears throat> designer diary interview three hours bring the story of your your game's development to life with a designer diary interview this is a designer interview that goes well beyond the game slash mechanics through a blend of carefully selected pre-planned question and dynamic follow-ups Ooh, ooh, ooh! we already have this <clears throat> yeah yeah we already have this okay so i need to cut one of those cut one and yeah i ended, and that's why whoa my throat's going <clears> throat> oh i haven't done a live stream this long in quite a while uh, that's because I felt like three hours is a bit much. Especially considering it's going to be you telling me the story of your game. So this one's going to get bumped down to two hours instead of three hours. Uh, this service is perfect for designers looking to share their passion, challenges, and triumphs. So essentially this is going to be... <clears throat> this is going to be more of how did your game come to life? Like, was this the one game you've been working on? Or did you have 20 games that you were working on? Like, I, that's what it's going to be. I want to know the story behind your game how did you decide to do the drafting mechanism why didn't you do this sort of thing so essentially i'm gonna do a little bit of research into it then we're gonna chit chat should be an easy one i i don't know if people are gonna be interested in it but we'll see <clears throat> oh man we can do this board game geek liaison three hours or five hours plus two hours per expansion and this is the final one that my boss suggested which i actually think is kind of brilliant Step into the spotlight on Board Game Geek, BGG, the undisputed heartland, I love that word, of the board gaming world. Like it or hate it, it is. With our dedicated, and I love it, so I'm not, I'm not saying that in a negative way. With our dedicated service designed for both BGG veterans and newcomers, if you already have a BGG account, we'll handle all aspects of your game page. Set up from detailed description to engaging visuals. So pretty much, I'm going to have a list of things. You give me this list of things, I'm going to pump them in there. I, and I can even set you up a Board Game Geek account if you want. That's the full five-hour service. For those without an account, our comprehensive package includes... Creating your BGG profile and then your game's page, ensuring a polished and appealing presence on the essential platform. Let us bridge the gap between your game and the vast BGG community, offering a straightforward path of visibility and engagement. There's a reason why typically I have a big thing of water between I do these live streams. Because that's my second to last drink of coffee, and my throat is raw. Glad I'm not doing a Kickstarter critique today. Uh, prototype shipping service. 30 minutes, one hour plus shipping cost. This one's pretty much just, hey... You want to get your, your package into the hands of somebody else, I will do that. Simplify the process of sharing a game with the broader board game community through our Game Dispatch service specifically tailored for sending games to reviewers or returning them to you. For scenarios where pre-printed shipping labels, boxes, and details are provided, I'll allocate 30 minutes to ensure your game is packaged securely and dispatched correctly. If the shipment requires me to handle the logistics, such as creating shipping labels or organizing courier pickups, the service extends to one hour to accommodate these additional efforts. This service is designed to bridge the gap between your game and influential reviewers, facilitating a smooth and efficient game transfer because it's one of those things you wouldn't think about but as a content creator man i hate going to the post office so i want to get paid if i have to take something somewhere and box it up and do the stuff and the saying now this one i am incredibly excited before i hinted at it a little bit earlier my goal my dream for bowers game corner it has been literally since the first like i don't know there came a point in bowers game corner where i said to myself I could do this for the rest of my life because I love board games. I love talking about board games. I love playing board games. I love looking at board games. I love everything about board games, right? So this one, on-site game showcase production. If you can think of a better name for this, I would appreciate it. TBD, because I don't know how the pricing is going to work on this. I imagine it will go... Uh, service by service but this one's kind of nuts strap for time or prototypes the on-site game showcase production service is for you if your project is within a 12-hour drive from northeast indiana i will personally travel to your location to produce a high quality video showcasing your game whether you prefer to be in the spotlight be still my beating heart because if you teach me how to play with a how to play video that's way easy for me to do along your side your creation or let me take your game back to my camper for the evening and yes i phrase that one the way i wanted to to make me chuckle not chat gpt now let me take your game back to my camper for the evening this service provides a unique opportunity to capture the essence of your game when you thought that option was off the table i feel like this needs to have another sentence in there potentially but essentially this is i will drive to you i will go to my, and this is actually <clears throat> full behind the corner here my aunt who's, who's now a widower my grandmother and my grandfather who's she's about to turn 88 next like two weeks and my other aunt all live in these three little houses by a tiny lake in in indiana they're dirt cheap they're they're not they're not that well off right my, like my grandma and my grandpa on a fixed income my aunt is on disability and she gets like money for being a widower and my other aunt like she works remotely and stuff like that none of them are very well off so this is a really exciting opportunity for me because my aunt has a camper and essentially 
I'm going to get paid to do this, and then I'm going to be able to give my aunt some money, and then I'm going to borrow her camper, and then I'm also going to take my kids, too. Because if you're like, yeah, I'm in Dayton, Ohio, and I want I want you to do this thing, I'm going to go, I'm going to do my work, and then I'm going to set it at a campground with my kids and have an amazing time. So this is honestly the one that I'm the most excited about. Because it's like, it's little mini weekend vacations with my family. Um, super excited for this one. Not sure how it's going to work, how it's going to cost, but over the moon. Because this is, this is, this is the dream. Uh, video editing service varies. The video refinement service is tailored for, oh, I need to fix that video editing service. It's tailored for creators to seek a level up from the basic editing skills, but don't require the finesse of a high-end professional edit. Once again, if you know this channel... Uh, you might not know this. I actually do know how to edit a little bit. Add a giggity after the camper line. I don't think my boss would like that one. Either that or he really would, but I don't want to take that risk. Because the bottom line is, he could pull this at any moment. He could be like, you know what? I don't I don't want it. I don't want to do this. Uh, so, no, I, 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 I've tried to do this big. As you can see, I tried to be as professional as hell with this because... When my boss told me about this opportunity, I'll be honest with you. The first gl the first thing that came to mind was, "Oh, am I getting fired? <laughs> Are you firing me? That sucks." And it makes sense. I don't I don't hold any ill will to him. He's he's he owns a factory in China, so having any employees from the United States of America are going to be way more expensive than it would be to have, you know, employees somewhere else. You get what I'm saying? Uh, so essentially this is one where I will do some minor video editing for you. And this one's got a star in front of you essentially to say, Hey, you think you can do this? And I'll be like, Nope, probably can't. <laughs> or yeah, maybe I can. Uh, so then we have, I think about five, six more. These are mid campaign Kickstarter services, YouTube short at launch and wrap up services. This is 30 minutes. This one's dirt cheap. Cause once again, when it comes to YouTube shorts, they're scratching a lottery ticket. Sometimes they can blow up. They can do big. Sometimes they're not going to do anything at all. And they're fun to make for me. Maximize your game's visibility with my dynamic YouTube shorts launch and wrap-up service designed to advertise your game in bite-sized engaging content. This service includes the creation of two one-minute YouTube shorts, one to generate buzz around your game's launch, and another to maintain momentum as your campaign wraps up, so essentially in the last 48 hours. Created with spontaneity and enthusiasm, because I got plenty of that, these shorts aim to grab potential backers' attention through... Uh, uh, attention, though I welcome any specific directions or highlights you would like to include. Additionally, these shorts can serve as a strategic, strategic tool for achieving social goals. Offering, yeah, simple. So essentially, I'll pull two YouTube shorts out for you. Maybe they'll do something. Maybe they won't. At the end of the day, it's one of my cheapest services. Kickstarter Critique, one hour. You probably know what that is. The Kickstarter Critique service is a unique live stream where I dive deep into your campaign, offering blunt yet humorous feedback. It's an interactive experience, inviting audience participation for a dynamic review session. This service highlights your project's key elements and potential areas for improvement, all while engaging with live audience for real-time questions and insights. And I love when game designers hop in those Kickstarter Critiques. I think those make them so much more fun. Plus, the critique will be shared on my social media extending its reach and impact yes i'm gonna start getting more on social media i do have a twitter i do have a facebook i hell i even have an instagram that's just long since forgotten uh but i need to get better about those and i will this approach provides not just valuable insights but also a fun and engaging way to polish your kickstarter campaign yep remaining subscribers first view feature service one hour for seven days uh you might know know about this but there's a there's a special spot that i can go back here customization and i can change what the returning thing for subscribers is which you know what let's boom pop this right here bam that's it that's that's you paying me for one hour i just keep that up there for seven days and that's how simple <laughs> that's how simple that one is <laughs> so boom done so i really do love this one i hope people take it maximize your game impacts with our subscribers first feed uh view feature service placing your project in the spotlight on my channel this exclusive service ensures that one of your videos i've created uh, and so essentially if you're a returning subscriber it will just pop this up and you'll see this is one of the first things you see you don't actually see the video but it'll be like oh there it is i can click on it if i want to um, this is exclusive service ensures that one of your videos I've created about your game is the first thing returning subscribers see when they visit my YouTube page. It's an unparalleled opportunity to captivate an engaged audience from the moment they arrive, highlighting your game. Oh, chat GPT. Highlighting your game's appeal and generating immediate interest. Ideal for amplifying visibility during key promotional windows. This feature is designed to draw viewers directly into the world of your game, setting the stage for increased engagement and excitement. Social media booster. This one, I was really proud of myself as well. Also super simple. The social media service is your key to amplified campaign visibility or so on social media. Simply shoot me the links whenever you post and we'll... I'll, I think that's, uh, well, I guess Will's fine. It will engage with your content to cleverly increase its interaction rate. So essentially, you'd be like, hey, I posted on the board game group. Hey, I posted on Twitter. And I'll go in there and I'll, inter and I'll interact with them and tickle the Kickstarter algorithms. Hell, 
Heck, I might even get a couple of my burners to interact with him. I got like a, a Denver Broncos, uh, I got the, the Broncos Grinch on Twitter. You know, like I can interact with that. It's just essentially me tickling the back end stuff for one hour. It's super easy work. The strategic engagement triggers algorithms to favor your posts, broadening your reach and making your project more discoverable to potential backers. Ideal for cutting through the digital noise. God, ChatGPT is so good sometimes. The service is an essential ally in the competitive social media landscape, ensuring your message reaches the hearts and screens of your intended audience. Uh, we have the campaign's energizer stream add-on two hours so one thing a lot of kickstarter campaigns will do is they'll say hey on x y and z day we're gonna have a live stream and that's what i'm going to do the campaign en campaign energizer stream is a strategic add-on designed to breathe life in your kickstarter campaign during the often sluggish mid campaign phase this service facilitates direct engagement with your audience through live gameplay demonstrations q a sessions and updates about your project oh because in theory the person who's running the Kickstarter will also be there. Fostering a vibrant community atmosphere. Be careful uh, By carefully timing these streams to coincide with periods of lower activity, the Campaign Energizer stream ensures your campaign maintains momentum, keeps backers interested, and attracts new supporters, all while adding an interactive and personal touch to your promotional efforts. And biased on what he said last time about not being able to brew loose leaf coffee, probably better. Add this, YouTube shorts to pair your game with one of my special blend coffees that I regularly review. <laughs> I love making the coffee content. Because the bottom line is, coffee's worldwide. And I just I was like, all right, throw out some YouTube shorts to see if they do something. Plus, it's fun, you know? They're, I love making YouTube shorts. Featured Game of the Week service. Three outs for seven days. Elevate your game's visibility with the Featured Game of the Week service, a premier spotlight opportunity that ensures your game is front and center in all my activities over the course of a week. This includes special mention at the beginning of each Kickstarter critique and video... I produce, giving your game exclusive exposure to my audience. Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again for another Kickstarter critique, where every day we take a look at a new Kickstarter project at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and today, this week, we are sponsored by this special Kickstarter right here, which is live. There's a link down below. It is 85% towards funding, and it could really use your help. I did another video about it, which is right down below. You should check that one out, because it helps me out. It helps them out. It's good. Now, let's get into today's project. That's essentially all it is. I'm going to add, like, an extra sentence or two at the beginning of every Kickstarter start a critique and hopefully get paid to do it not hard to do i just need a piece of paper in front of me that says make sure i mention this game the physical copy is available your game will also take pride uh take will also take pride of place no 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 that doesn't make sense so we need to go check out the featured game of the week service because that does not make sense that's one of those chat dpt ones that didn't get caught featured game of the week and this is actually exciting this is some more behind the scenes stuff i used to be a big dumpster diver uh, this uh, includes special mention at the beginning of each Kickstarter key video I produce. Give your game exclusive exposure to my audience with physical copies available. Your game will also take pride of place in my featured game case. So when I was at Gamma at 6.30 p.m. on the last day, they shut it down, and then people just trashed a, a lot of their booth. You know, if you're from Romania, if you're from Europe, do you really want to ship back some shelving units? It's not even worth it. And there was a big, like, five-foot-tall glass display case that you're going to see in the back of my videos now. Uh, not the Kickstarter videos, but the other ones, uh, where I'm going to put the featured game of the month. It'll just be back there. You know, it's just like an extra little thing. So, yes, I'll mention during the Kickstarter critiques, but if I shoot a long-form video, it'll also be back there. This service is designed to provide your game with a concentrated burst of attention, helping to boost awareness, interest, and engagement during critical periods of your campaign or marketing efforts. Pretty simple. Pretty clear. I got to put your game in a glass display case and mention it before my Kickstarters, and I get three hours for seven days on it. Easy money for me. Game Corner Kickstarter Guardian Service. Four hours up to a 28-day campaign. I think this one might need a different name. I don't know what it is yet. So essentially is, one thing I always try and look at when I look at a Kickstarter page is how many collaborators you have. Because if, if you don't have a lot of collaborators, it's really hard to do customer service potentially. So essentially, I will be a collaborator on your project. And I will poke in once a day, maybe twice a day if the campaign's really popping off, because that's fantastic. It pops off, obviously. And I'll check to make sure there's not a flaming dumpster fire here. I'll respond to certain stuff that can be easily responded to, like, oh, is there a rule book? I'll be like, yeah, it's about 70% down the page. You know, that sort of stuff. Little minor bookkeeping things. Very easy to do. Elevate your Kickstarter campaign with the Game Quarter Kickstarter Guardian service where I join your project as a dedicated collaborator to oversee and enhance your customer service experience as your guardian. Oh, I like that word. I'll be involved in, I'm a guardian and I'm a liaison. <laughs> uh, I'll be involved in monitoring your campaign's comment section slash updating, addressing backer inquiries, and alerting you to urgent matters that require attention. Hey, you might want to go 
uh, talk to Dan B. Because Dan B. has dragged some flaming fire into your yard. That sort of thing. This service ensures that your communication remains seamless and responsive, building trust and fostering a positive community around your project. Let me help you with customer interactions so you can focus on bringing your vision to life with the peace of mind that your backers are in good hands. Once again, I can do this on my phone. I can do this on my iPad. I can do this at the lake. I can do this in the bathroom. I can do it anywhere at any time of the day. So it's an easy one. Um, and that's one of those ones where I just hope people are like, yeah, I'll throw that on. I'll throw on that four-hour one. That seems worth it. And, and for a lot of projects it'll be a complete waste of money because most projects don't get that much engagement. But, you know, hopefully I can help churn the engagement. You know, I'll be responding to your updates, that sort of stuff. And then we have post Kickstarter services. I only have one. And then two quotes to go over. Uh, Post-launch analysis and feedback video. This one I'm excited for as well. I've had a lot of suggestions for this one. Maximize the success of your next project with a comprehensive post-launch review of your Kickstarter campaign. This And this is going to be me interviewing you as well. Ooh, I think I should make this one longer than an hour. Anytime... I need to like create a Zoom call and get you there and me there at the same time. I feel like it, it warrants a little bit extra, a um, little bit extra. This service provides a detailed analysis of what worked, what didn't, and why, offering constructive feedback and strategic advice for future endeavors. Essentially, uh, it's going to be me and you talking about what worked on your Kickstarter, which I think is really going to be things people like. So yeah, we're going to bump this up to two hours, or maybe it's one hour. Hmm. We'll go two hours, and if it doesn't get bought, then we'll go one hours. Uh, Post-launch, I tried to do anything pretty much that required two people to go to it at minimum two hours. Just because it, it's just, it, it requires more organization. So, post-launch analysis, two hours. All right. Take my notes. We'll examine backer engagement, stretch goal outcomes, stretch goal outcomes, communication effectiveness, and overall campaign performance. This retrospective insight is invaluable for refining your approach to game development, community building, and crowdfunding strategy, setting the stage for even greater success in your next venture. This will be a video we shoot together discussing the process recommended before the campaign manager closes. Yeah, because that's the big thing. Like, oh, the campaign manager is closing. You want an extra video? Boom. This one might be it. And then interweaved through here i'm only gonna have two quotes i figure we're gonna have three main graphics here we got the first graphic right at the beginning where you see oh look at this guy 4.9 81 reviews look he knows what the hell he's talking about but then i'm also gonna have two quotes from two people one from lance the undead viking meister who works at gray fox games or previously tasty menstrual games so i went through his track record he uh and this one uh rob the in-house artist is gonna spice up uh, he's firsthand worked on projects that have raised over $5 million on Kickstarter, including Ragnarok's, Last Light, Yokohama's, or Orleans, and many more. And so it's essentially going to have his quote along with some of the pictures that he's worked on and the fact that he's raised over $5 million. I met Forrest at Gen Con over a decade ago, and he impressed me with his passion for the board game hobby. In the last decade, he has worked tirelessly on his YouTube channel and has helped countless companies improve their crowdfunding exposure and approach. His expertise in this area is undeniable, and he is a great person as well. I love Lance. Uh, the second quote is from Peter Vaughn, a cardboard alchemy, previously breaking game, longtime supporter of the channel, and a really super awesome dude, just in general. Uh, he, he doesn't have his quote right now. He's currently in China, but he's going to get that to me soon. He has worked firsthand on projects that have raised over $5 million. I got two $5 million people giving me quotes. That looks good, including Dwellings of Elderville, Rise of Tribes, Flamecraft, Andromeda's Edge, and more, and the quote coming soon. So, wow, my throat is raw. Last drink of coffee. Let's crush this outro. That's essentially what Bowers Game Corner is going to be pivoting to. There's still going to be gameplays and reviews and thoughts from the corners and weird, <laughs> weird coffee videos from time to time, YouTube shorts. But um, this really is hopefully going to be my new job. And it's to the point where, as you can see here, if you're a Kickstarter creator and you don't have any of this lined up, it's like, I don't know, I don't know who's getting my videos. I don't, I don't know. I don't have a, I, do I need this? The, the thing is that you're like, all right, I would like the rule booklet service. I'd like a preview video. I want a consultation. I want you to send the game on to somebody else. And then I want um, I want the, 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 the Kickstarter critique. So that's five things right there. And in theory, maybe you got eight, nine, ten hours there. And my boss was like, one thing you need to have in the back of your mind is you, if you go over 30 hours, which could realistically happen, like, I worked for Hero Time. I still do technically for like eight days, four days actually. Um, there's a lot of people at Hero Time who are currently in the process of making a Kickstarter project. And it's just, he's like, if you, if you get over 30 hours, I want you to be prepared to be able to bring someone else on. 
So, so essentially, Bowers Game Corner might be growing to multiple people. And so that's incredibly exciting for me as well. Um, I don't know what that looks like. I got a couple people in mind I might hire, but I don't know. But that's that's what's going on at Bowers Game Corner. That's what's going on behind the corner. If you enjoyed the segment, please let me know in the comments below. A couple things. First and foremost, any advice, anything glaring that you noticed uh, in all those descriptions that I might want to change, tweak, make be sound better. I don't know why I'd make it sound worse. Also, if you have any ideas for behind the corner, if there's anything in particular, you're like, I want to know what it's like doing this behind the corner, ask, and most likely I'll make a video on it because that's just how I roll. I, I try to be fully transparent with everything I do on Bowers Game Corner because quite personally, I know a lot of people are like, don't talk about money. We don't, you know, don't want people talking about the money. It's tacky. It's blah, blah, blah. I love talking about money. I, I think it's fascinating. I wish I would love i would watch every second if tom vassell just whipped up his channel analytics page no he's never going to do it this is that's just not how he rolls but um i find this sort of stuff fascinating so let me know in the comments below a variety of different things i'm gonna shut up because my throat is really sore right now kickstarter critique back again tomorrow actually it's a backer kick critique we'll see how that one goes and as always if you're enjoying the content please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below as i'm trying to reach thirty thousand subscribers this year because that's a really cool number bye bye